And finally, I want to explain this great article, which is global normalization. So they do it jointly. I mean, jointly entity, name entity recognition, and also relation extraction. So NER and relation extraction, both of them jointly. So they learn both of them jointly. I mean, this article in 2017 by Highway Schutz, and we introduce globally normalized convolutional or neural networks for joint entity classification and relation extraction. So you are familiar with these name entity recognition, person, uh, and this is other. And there is, if there is a relation between two entities, Anderson and, for example, Associated Press, the relation is work for. So this is a like knowledge graph. If you have seen my playlist for knowledge graphs, we are connecting two entities together. So we are not, uh, learning not only these tags, person, organization, we label to each word a tag, like person, organization, location, others. Uh, we all we are also learning the relations. What is work for? We label it work for. So, most approaches consider these two tasks separately, but here we are doing it uh, together jointly. So, what is important is that name entity recognition and relation extraction are are mutually dependent. You cannot separate them. That's why this is the motivation of this article that is learning them together. So if the types of entities are known, the search space of possible relations between them can be reduced. So this can help, for example, to resolve ambiguities, such as in the case of Mercedes, which can be person, person or organization and location. So we are modeling context and entities. So given an input sequence and two queries, the model identifies the types of entities and relation. So after, after we have done convolutions, we apply K-max pooling for both entities and the context and we concatenate the results. So the concatenated vector, this C of Z, uh, Z is either entity classification or relation extraction. This is relation extraction. So C of Z, the concatenated vector, this one, is forwarded to a task-specific hidden size which learns patterns across different input port, parts. So with, with weights, we, VZ, so we are learning these weights and bias B, this is the bias. So we are learning this V of Z weight and this bias B of Z. And so everything is as usual, like previous lecture that I explained LSTM CRF, but we are also modeling the relations. So, for example, originates based in this is a relation between two entities. So this is the tag of first one, tag of second one. And what we are doing is we are calculating this. The number of output classes is the summation of, because some of them are uh, entity classification. And also you should know relation extraction. And uh, so we represent them. This is entity classification and this is entity classification, but relation extraction connects them. So we model them with V. And finally, our score of a sequence is just this V that I explained plus this Q. And D, as I said, is a uh, uh, score of entity. For example, when we say D21, it means the score at location 2 being per person. 
or D22, it means the score at location 2 being location. So at each, at each location, we have a vector of scores. And so th these are the same ideas, transition things, going from organization to organization. So this is what we have done it before. It's CRF, the transition matrix of CRF. And so for the global normalization, this is what we are doing. Q is the transition score. Transition. You see, everything is, is the same except the that we are also uh, considering the, re the relation as well. So Q is the transition score from class K to class L. So it's a matrix of transitions. So for training, forward algorithm computes the score of possible label sequences, why? to get the log probability of the correct label sequence. So this is the log likelihood, log probability, which is the softmax over S scores. And you know, using VTRB, we can easily calculate this as I explained in the uh, in previous two lectures, the VTRB algorithm and we implemented in PyTorch. So now you can calculate this argmax.